Hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and reflection. It's been an incredible journey through the book of Acts. It reads like a travel blog of the Med, but not a holiday as it's full of trials and tribulations. Especially after chapter 9 when Saul came into the story and in chapter 13 the dramatic conversion to Christianity. Then he was named Paul. He spread the gospel message from Jerusalem to Rome. Paul has arrived in Rome and he usually goes straight to a synagogue to preach but because he is under house arrest he can't do that so he arranges a meeting at his house. So I'll now read Acts 28, 17 to 31. Three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had not done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they examined me, the Romans wanted to release me because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, we have received no letters <coughs> from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here have reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think, for the, with regard to this sect we know that everywhere it is being spoken against. After they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him at his lodgings in great numbers. From morning until evening, he explained the matter to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he'd said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other, and as they were leaving, Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit was bright in saying to your ancestors, through the prophet Isaiah. Go to this people and say, you will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn and I would heal them. Let it be known to you, then, that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there for two whole years at his own expense, and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God, and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ, with all boldness and without hindrance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, Paul can't go to the synagogue as he usually does when he's uh, visiting somewhere. That's the first thing he does. So he arranges a meeting with the Jewish leaders and he defends himself. Now this is the sixth defence that Paul gives. And he wasn't attacking the Jewish nation. He just wants them to come to know Jesus Christ as he does. The hope of Israel, he says. Jews were waiting for the Messiah, and still are, the promised one. Paul knew the Old Testament scriptures like the back of his hand, and he tried to persuade them how Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies in the scriptures, not suspended or trans transferred them. Jesus, who was mocked and tried, then crucified on a cross, was buried then rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven 40 days later. He spent hours and hours discussing and explaining to the Jewish leaders not a 10 minute sermon or a weekly hours Bible study and some believed and some didn't. 
Paul continued to live there for two years under house arrest, chained to a guard. A captive audience, you could say. They had to listen to Paul. They had no choice. But they had a choice to believe or not, just as we do. That's what you call a lockdown. They probably did shifts, so he probably had many guards who heard the good news, who then went round and spread it around the Roman Empire, especially in the town where they were. Or I should say the areas where they were. Paul's prison became his pulpit. He wrote letters to the Philippians, Colossians, Philemon and Ephesians. God didn't waste Paul's time in Rome. God never wastes our time, though we might waste it by not sensing God's purpose for our lives. At the moment, whilst in lockdown, um, in the local lockdown, I've reread Rick Warren's The Purpose Driven Life. It's a book of a 40 day spiritual journey. Well, today, apparently, the average lifespan is around 26, 27, 1550 days so setting aside 40 days of them to figure out what God wants you to do with the rest of them is again a choice in the Bible God considers 40 days a spiritually significant time whenever God wanted to prepare someone for his purposes he took 40 days in the book it says Noah's life was transformed by 40 days of rain. Moses' life was transformed by 40 days on Mount Sinai. The spies were transformed by 40 days in the promised land. David was transformed by Goliath's 40 day challenge. Elijah was transformed when God gave him 40 days of strength from a single meal. The entire city of Nineveh was transformed when God gave the people 40 days to change. And Jesus was empowered by 40 days in the wilderness. And the disciples were transformed by 40 days with Jesus after his resurrection. And one chapter in this book reminds us how little time we have on earth and not to try and use God for our purpose, but let God use us for his purpose instead so while we feel that we are unable to travel anywhere at the moment, the ch and church is not the same, we can continue to reach out to so many more people because of technology. The Church of England has provided over 17,000 online services, plus over 3 million views on social media. Many of those never had been in contact, maybe not been in contact with a local church. And it's a sign of the hunger we all have for a spiritual meaning in our lives. So if we don't hear the good news of Jesus Christ, how can we make that choice? Whether to believe it or not believe. Paul had a purpose. He had a goal. And he reached his goal to preach in Rome. But his ultimate goal was yet to come. This chapter ends abruptly. But there is no end to the story. Why? Because this same story is repeated again and again throughout the history of the church. Trusting in Jesus, relying on the power of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Father and the Word of God will continue to change lives for the glory of God. The book of Acts really is a never-ending story. And we'll hear more of Paul in the future books that we're about to be reading in the next few weeks. Oh, let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for all who have gone before and taught the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to open our eyes and ears so you can increase in us the gift of faith that we may join with you in everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Thank you for listening.